tarot fam so i have been busy recording tarot 101 final videos so i'm hoping that i will have that class ready for you by the end of next week i've got a lot of stuff going on but i have finished the court cards we're going to talk a little bit about those in an independent video so that i can kind of pique people's interest but in this video, we are going way back on some questions. So I have questions from 10 months ago that we're going to add into this Mixtape Monday. So get your cup of tea, get your cup of coffee and get ready. We're going to go bananas right now. So thank you so much for being here um, this week. Uh, just remember that I do have on the 3rd of December a members only video where I give away one hour reading to my tarot masters. Um, there's going to be one lucky winner who gets that. And then there's a half hour that's going to go to one of my tarot enthusiasts. Um, but you got to be in it to win it. And you have to be in the video in order to be eligible for it. So you unfortunately have to be live for that. That's how my uh, selector works. So um, let's get crazy. Let's start doing some readings. I'm going to bring up the card view. Please like, share, and subscribe. And we're off to the races, kids. Let's go. So we're going to use this super golden tarot. So DMV Rant had asked 10 months ago, so a long time ago, on uh, has Meghan Markle's manuscript been rejected three times, psychic tarot reading, it's from a long time ago. Um, what can, should each of them do to live their best life from this position? I think this is an interesting question about Harry and Meghan. I know we've been uh, suffering from some Sussex fatigue. So I haven't been reading on them as much, but I did get someone who said, stop with the Megan bashing today. I'm not Megan bashing. Her name was on the polo thing as an executive producer and I did a reading on her. So I'm not bashing. So let's find that yellow brick road for them. So today it is November 24th, 3.20 in the afternoon, New York time. What should Harry do to live his best life from this time forward? What should he do? The magician, the magician. He has all of the skills and things he needs to transform. Remember that death card is about transformation. Not necessarily escaping the, oh, this is wild. I'm going to pull one more card and we'll leave that upside down for now. So the escape was not correct. The true escape happens now. So that is what he needs to do to live his best life. I'm going to put one up here and one down below as well. Let's see where he's going. He has devastated his foundation. So unfortunately, Harry is going to have to recraft his entire life recraft everything about himself, rebrand, resurrect. This is a true Phoenix moment. I think his future is with the support of the royal family to help him recover. And then I think he goes on his merry way. I don't think he stays with the royal family if that is his goal to live his best life and put his head down on his pillow every night and look at himself in the right way. I think that he needs to go back make amends, and then leave merrily. What's up top? Up top, that knight of wands in reverse. He was too impulsive. He needs to now live through that impulsivity under the surface. He knows that he was not the self-starter. He wasn't a guy who was going to make it happen. So this, I think, is really an interesting read. I think 
going back to the royal family, getting some grace for a little bit is fantastic. But I think ultimately he goes off and lives in a little hermit shack someplace. So that is going to be giving him the most peace. What does Megan have to do? What does Megan have to do to live her best life from today? Again, it's November 24th. She has to out the bad guys. Ooh, there's some conflict. Seven of swords, five of wands, five of cups, king of cups in reverse, page of wands in, or page of swords in reverse, and the three of cups. And I got two cards on the bottom. So the chariot and two of swords. So under the surface, we know that moving on is really key and that we need to move on. We've got two ways we can go. We can either embrace this life that we've been living or we can go live a different life. Unfortunately, I think for her, the bad blood will out on this one. With that seven of swords, we're going to see the negativity. We're going to see the conflict and the stupid stories that didn't match up. And is it going to be poor little me? I cannot see the good things that are on the side here. Absolutely. She will be disjointed um, emotionally if she continues on this path. Unfortunately, this is the best way for her to get out of this situation because that's really what she needs to do. She did not fit into the role of the Duchess, the wife of Harry, Prince of Wailing. Um, she did not fit into that role and she needs to extricate herself from that. Is this going to be a happy, fun thing for her? Absolutely not. I don't see what her future is beyond this, but she needs to remove herself from this particular incarnation. So a rebrand, yes, once again, but it's not going to be a rebrand as Harry's wife. It would be a rebrand of her as a human being, which is a little bit more tricky. So great question from DM Brandt. We are going to clean up our real estate and move on to the next one. So this question is actually nine months ago from my good friend, Alicia Wicker. If you're not following her, get over there and follow her. Um, <laughs> I can't believe I missed this. But Alicia asked, why does Megan continue to pretend and not be genuine? What is her motivation for being fake? Or why is she guarded in being genuine? So what is her motivation for being so phony and inauthentic. What is the motivation of that? Let's see, let's see, let's see. The high priestess. Secrets kept. Keeping those secrets behind the scene. So this is like a very typical um, LA kind of perspective. She's going to craft a character and everyone's going to buy it or not. So here, this is a new start. She never liked the person that she was. She never liked, oh, she's very, very negative. That King of Cups in reverse about her persona. The Three of Cups, she was not happy with the standard regular life that she had as, you know, regular person in America, in Hollywood, whatever. I mean, her husband, her, her father did well, but they were not, you know, the Coppola's or um, the Spielberg's or anything like that. So she was always tantalized by that excess. This three of cups in reverse is excess and not understanding that excess and really looking at it like that's where I want to be. I want the big house. I want all of this, not seeing the work that was due in between. And that brings us here, this page of swords. She never conceptualized that it was hard work. She always thought it was elbow rubble, rubbling, rubbling, rubbing, elbow rubbing and who you know, and just kind of working into a situation, not working at a situation, if that makes sense. So here, 
Um, the seven of pentacles, no one would ever look back or check her work on this, which is very typical in Hollywood. A lot of people craft a story for themselves, craft a persona, and then just kind of run with it. So, you know, we get that, oh, well, I'm, I'm a, um, you know, an altruistic, uh, you know, social justice warrior type, you know, we, and I think the archetype for Meghan Markle was that Angelina Jolie, Julia Roberts kind of altruism. Um, Angelina Jolie, I think was very quiet about it early on and then kind of ramped up. It became more well-known. Um, Julia Roberts has always been an advocate for the environment. I, she doesn't wear deodorant and shave her armpits, apparently. Uh, I don't know if that still continues. But I think Meghan Markle thought that no one would ever look back on the vapidness and frivolity of those videos that we did see where she was driving around with her friends. So how did she see herself? She saw herself as the tower card, something that was changeable, radically changeable. She wanted to radically change it. In all honesty, with this tower card, I think she expected some agent to come along and make me over want to be nice. Um, and kind of that's Tina Turner. I can Tina song. Um, I think that's really what she wanted. She probably watched those movies about Marilyn Monroe, where they pluck the hairline, bleach the hair, fix the nose. And she wanted someone to do that for her. She crafted the storyline behind her. This is what I want to be. She found the success archetype and then tried to craft a goal line to get to that. So others see her as social climbing. This really is a social climbing, fast kind of moving energy, trying to get that brass ring without the work. Hopes and fears. The hope is that Hollywood's going to love her, that they are going to see her as here comes the bride all day long and stare at her over there. Final result, six of cups. She just wanted everyone to find her so sweet and so wonderful. She never <coughs> wanted that past to be uncovered, that past that the high priestess was covering up. So it was a crafted reality. That's basically why she continues to not be genuine. She is playing the role of Meghan Markle. Not Rachel Meghan Markle, but Meghan Markle. She tried to create a character that she was going to be. This is why the marriages will not succeed, because she is not even presenting in her personal life the actual person that she is. None of us have seen the actual person that she is. So we will see one day when all of it comes off. So great question from Alicia. Let's clean up the real estate. We will get to a next one. So let's talk a little bit about Henry William Daglish Cavill. <laughs> so uh, Henry Cavill. So I am somewhat unaware of this person. Um, a little bit aware because he is into Warhammer and so is my husband, Gregopedia. So uh, I do know that he played Superman in the extended DC universe. Um, and he was on the Tudors, which I did not watch, though I should probably. Um, he was in The Witcher. He was also in Sherlock Holmes. And uh, what else? What else is he in? The Count of Monte Cristo. Um, and I do think that there is a Highlander reboot that he is possibly going to and, be. It he what? is currently in uh, some licensing troubles with Amazon regarding the Warhammer 40,000 universe. Okay. So he's okay. trying to keep it purist and Amazon is trying to get their DEI in it. Ah, so Gregopedia said that, uh, yeah, who'd you say? Netflix? Uh, Amazon. Amazon is doing a Warhammer project and he is fighting them on the purity of the Warhammer universe. So trying to not 
get anything crazy. But this question from my viewer, uh, let me tell you who the viewer was. So uh, it's TX Lil, it was five months ago. Um, it was about this, uh, he's MIA, five months ago he was missing in action and his new home was registered under a trust fund and he announced his first baby uh, seems not too happy, now nothing. Um, is he in a baby trap? Is this pregnancy to keep him? Not planned. So trying to find out if he has any children. I am not seeing personal life. Um, blah, 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 blah. Let's see. Uh, not a whole lot on his wiki um, with his personal life. So I don't know. Uh, there is plenty about Total War, Warhammer 2, and the Warhammer 40,000 series. Uh, but nothing really about his... He hates Warhammer. He doesn't, have, he doesn't have a social life. But it, do you know if he's having a baby? I don't think so. I don't know. Uh, it says he was in a relationship with Natalie Viscuso. And in April, it was announced that they're expecting their first child. So okay. I don't know. I, I Presumably, they would have had that baby by now. I don't know. But uh, let's see what's going on with them. So uh, the one thing I do want to say, that, that when you put your house in trust, that is not a surprising thing with celebrities. That's, that's a, a, a way to... Um, avoid having any issues, especially if he is um, British born, he may have some issues with owning excessive properties here in the United States. So the trust may be for that reason. So let's look at that. Is the house, uh, actually, correction, we'll go back a little bit. Oh, and you know what? This deck feels a little bit more him. Dark Mansion Tarot here. I have a link to this one in the description of the video if you are interested in getting it. So, whoops. Hit a button over here. So, missing in action. Why is he missing in action? Greg says that he is very reclusive because he is into the Warhammer 40K. If you're unaware of what Warhammer 40K is, it is a gameplay system that you also actually create your, your play figures. It's a very artistic, involved endeavor. Gregopedia does it. It is amazing, the work that he does. Um, perhaps I will have some... Uh, figures in the thumbnail of this. So what is he up to? The death. Refusing to evolve. So is that personally or professionally? The devil. He is refusing to pull himself away from something. So he may be one of those people who gets deep into Warhammer and does not want to come out of it. So it's just investment in that fantasy world. I think we will see him reemerge from his Warhammer cocoon. Greg, what characters go into a cocoon and then come out in Warhammer? Uh, nothing really goes into a cocoon. No one goes into a cocoon in Warhammer. Okay, so There's a lot worse things that happen. I know. <laughs> there are a lot worse things that happen. So I have my own army. I have space nuns. They are nuns with guns. Creed nuns with guns. Crazy ladies. Crazy ladies. So um, I think that he is consolidating his energy. But here. I think with this page of pentacles, this is creating a new legacy. So announcing that first baby, I think he is trying to evolve into that. Is he going to be successful? Absolutely. Yes. We're going to see him return to uh, <laughs> this current timeline. He's reassessing where he's going to go with that. He was engaged once before. So perhaps he's kind of feathering that nest and planning for the future. So I do think he's going to evolve. Um, he's just having a little bit of a slow time doing it. I think we'll see him soon. So um, holding up is not the worst thing in the world. So what about this house in trust? What's the reason for the house being in trust? S 
So I think it has something to do with his immigration status. I don't think that he can own all of these various properties without doing something else. So I, I think that, that having that house in trust and, and like, you know, don't come for me in the comments and say, oh, well, there are plenty of British people who own properties here. Look at the Beckhams. Blah, 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 blah. There may be something else going on with his immigration. He may not be able to have like, you know, house here, house there, that sort of thing. So I think this is an easy way for him to have a residence without um, jumping through some other hoops. So I think this makes it the easiest thing in the world. I know, um, you know, my parents there, they, they had put a property in trust because it would be easier to untie in the event that one of them passed away. So, um, sometimes you have to do things like that. So that kind of makes sense to me. I think that this is only until he sorts out exactly if he is going to stay there. There may be something about leasing it out when he's not there, that kind of thing. So uh, I do think that there is something to, there was a disappointment at one point about not being able to kind of set that up as a, a uh, primary location. I don't want to say the primary location, but a primary location. So what's going on with this baby? Is he not happy about this baby? Is he not happy? Let, let's look at the relationship with the gal. Let's look at the relationship with the gal. And what was her name again? What did I say? Uh, Natalie Viscuso. I don't know. It doesn't say anything about her. But is it, how is the relationship with her? He is a hottie. I'll give you that. Ooh. Three of swords in reverse. Page of cups. I don't think that they are going to proceed with the life together. Um, that is really unfortunate. Two of Cups business relationship. So I think that they're going to craft a parenting plan together. I mean, that Three of Swords, if it were upright, would be loss. So um, I don't think that I see a loss here, but I see a loss of the union. I think it is going to be a co-parenting situation. I just don't think that they're going to get married. Um I don't think they're going to live together either. I think this is going to be a very separate kind of experience. Ace of Swords, yeah, let's, I don't want to do this. Um, others are going to see it as very successful. In this particular deck, we get Six of Wands with that happy marriage there. But I am not seeing that. I think people are going to say, you know, this is as good as it gets. Page of Pentacles, we are not creating a new life together. The judgment card, if they were to continue with the relationship on a semi or more permanent um, level, I think a lot of people would have some issues with it. I don't think that it is a relationship that stands the test of time. So uh, that's kind of how I see that. So what does he need to do to live his best life? What is he? Oh, that's no good. Let's flip these. To do, to do. What does he need to do to live his best life? Seven of Cups. Keep those options open. Seven of Pentacles. Keep looking back at things. Five of Wands, avoid conflict. Two of Wands, don't be forced into anything and keep a pleasant disposition. So I think this is specifically directed at the baby mama. You know, keeping that pleasant disposition, I think, is a really good plan. Keeping her happy. It's, uh, you know, it's unfortunate that that's not going to be um, a typical family situation, but I think this is the best case scenario. I think if he continues any further into that relationship, it may not be, um, as pleasant and happy as possible. So there we go. That's what I have to say about that. Um, so thank you for that question. And we are going to move on to the next one.
So this request came from Deception Dismantled three months ago. She says, Miss Annabelle, I love when people call me Miss Annabelle. I feel like a dance instructor. Um, are you going to be doing an updated reading on the energy in the Middle East, the energy in Europe, the energy around the China tensions? I know most of it is probably set up to look like blah, blah. I just feel like even the... Um, I just feel like even with that, there is hostile energy. Of course, it's W-A-R. Um, it's just a lot of energy. And I have a hard time reading it. I understand what you're saying when you do your readings on them. Um, thank you. So deception dismantled. So I did talk about what was going on with China and Taiwan. So what I want to do is zero in on your reading about the Middle East. Because in the last week, there was an arrest warrant issued for uh, Bibi Netanyahu. And um, there has been a lot of action with uh, Putin and North Korea and Joe Biden and all kinds of stuff. So let's talk about just the Middle East with Netanyahu. So, energy in the Middle East. How are we going to do with the tensions surrounding Netanyahu? Is this arrest warrant? And to be sure, they did issue arrest warrants for the leaders of Hamas, the the, uh, the surviving leaders of Hamas. Um, but we're just going to read on BB for now. This is this is BB. Eight of Cups. He's not going to back down. Page of Cups. He is going to change his tactics, and the Hangman in reverse. He is not learning from those past acts. He is not going to back down. Not like Tom Petty, but like the warrior Jew that he is. Um, Queen of Cups is, he is going to, he is going to bleed for his people. He is there to preserve and support the state of Israel. And he is not going to give any quarry to any negotiations. So, um, you know, that, that is, an unfortunate truth for people that think peace can be achieved by negotiation. Um, I am reading his disposition right now. The five of cups, he is always going to look at the Jewish people as the chosen people. What is the outcome of this disposition is nine of swords. He will not be afraid. He will not be uh, uh, terrorized by anything that's going on around him. And he does not want his people to be terrorized or uh, fearful of the things that are going on around them. So where does that lead us? The two of pentacles, king of pentacles, knight of wands, and the devil in reverse, the devil in reverse. So he will essentially not be stressed by this and he will not be cowed by any of the organizations that are telling him to back down, bend, bend the knee, any of those things. He's not going to do that. He's not going to negotiate with terror. He is not doing that. Um, the hope is that he will be victorious. He can go in and do what he needs to do to defend his people, to uh, go go to the borders and address, not, not even going to get into the whole like entering Palestine, that kind of thing. Um, others see him as immovable. This king of pentacles here is immovable. This is not someone who is going to be uh, taken aside and whispered and he'll go, okay, I'll do what you say. And down here, anti two-state solution. He is not going to bow to a two-state solution. It's just not going to happen. So what about the arrest warrant? What about that arrest warrant? So if he leaves the state of Israel, he is going to be arrested. Um, pretty much any way, any, any direction he goes, he would wind up uh, being picked up. So what is going to happen with this arrest warrant? King of Wands. 
he'll let it burn, baby. He is just going to stay there. He is just going to stay there. So let's pick this up. So will the incoming administration be able to broker a peace in the Middle East? Will they be able to do that? We now have Mike Huckabee, which I think is a very interesting choice for, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. what is he? Um, the blah, blah, ambassador to Israel. I think he's a very interesting choice because he is a, a fundamental Christian. And so he does not have a vested interest in um, Judaism or in Muslim, uh, is Islamism. Is that, is that how I say it? Islamism? Um, he doesn't have a vested interest in either of those things. So just Islam. what? Just Islam. It's just, just Islam. Well, I said Judaism. Yeah, but it's just Islam. It's not Islamism? No. It's fun to say. Did yeah. you say it? But that would imply an Islamist. Islamist is a person who believes Islam is the only religion, whereas Islam is just a religion. Okay. All right. Thank you, Gregopedia fact checker. So will we be able to move beyond this? Are we going to be able to smooth the sands of the Middle East? Will that happen? Do a reveal. You guys love the dramatic reveal. Will there be a peace in the Middle East? Sword in reverse. Queen of Pentacles. It's all about the money. Money. There's that two-state solution. Two of Cups. This looks... Oh, guys, this looks better than I thought when I started out. So the Ace of Swords. We're going to lay down those swords. Everyone's going to get some prizes. So you get a prize. You get a prize. You get a prize. Maybe they'll give Oprah a job. Um, over here, Seven of Cups. We're not going to have a two-state solution. We're going to have a several kind of option solution. So I know that I'm, I'm mixing metaphors here, but um, it, it, it will have many, many, many options to negotiate. So there's going to be like package A, package B, package C, package D. Let's look at all of these options. Everybody, we can kind of figure out what's going to be the best fit for everybody. Do we get somewhere with that? Yes, we do. Does it bring peace to the Middle East? Not permanently. It's not going to be a permanent peace, unfortunately. We're going to make as many people happy as possible and simmer down the situation. Um, this two of swords and two of wands, I think that we broker a tense peace, not as tension filled as it was, say, in the 70s, 80s, early 90s, not, not as tension filled as that. Um, but I do think that we get a agreement of peace. When do we see that happening? Uh, Queen of Swords. So by next fall, it's going to take some time. That really will take some time. Is it peace in the Middle East? No. And again, I want to stress, I'm reading the current situation, the current energy. This is the energy at hand right now. So please be mindful of that. You know, if somebody makes a really stupid move or somebody freaks out, or if the Iron Dome doesn't function and there's another attack and they have to retaliate, something could change. So this is an ongoing situation. It's a hot spot in the world. Hot spot. Um, we're going to have to keep reading on it. Let's take a look. I, I, I Actually, I don't even want to do it um, on the Ukraine situation because I do think that, that that's just going to stand alone on its own reading. So hopefully uh, they won't do anything stupid before the United States Thanksgiving. Um, but let's let's move on to another topic. This is she, deception dismantled. That's a really big question. Um, I answered part of it. Hopefully I'll be able to answer the rest of it and stand alone. So let's move on. So this is a, li a little bit more fun in the sun. And we're talking about RFK Jr. So is RFK Jr. 
trying to get involved in the uh, Donald J. Trump's second administration so that he can get the real files on his uncle and his father's assassinations, fascinations. So is he trying to get in? Is that his primary objective? The fascinations of those two gentlemen are something that have crafted the personality of RFK Jr. They are something that he has thought about well into the night. However, he was bred into politics. If, if we ever had a royal family, it would look something like the Kennedys. The Nine of Pentacles, the Knight of Cups, the Six of Wands, the Emperor. Look at these cards, guys, and the Wheel of Fortune. This is a legacy of leadership that is bred into the individuals in the Kennedy family. Did he get a lot of the good stuff? Yeah, I think he did. Um, did he get a lot of the not so good stuff <laughs> legacy wise? Yes, he did as well. Um, I have his biography right now that I have been listening to. It's a, a very curious uh, life that he has had so far. But in, in this sense, he is trying to get into government to lead. He still wants the top job. He still wants that presidential job. And he does feel that it is fated to him. I think after he goes through this uh, stint as the, um, oh gosh, what is he? The Secretary of Health. He's been declared the Secretary of Health. I think that perhaps this is just to kind of park him someplace. Will he be involved in the files on his father and his uncle's fascinations? Three of wands. I don't think they want him involved because he is not objective. I think they will include him in the findings when those files are opened, I think he will be the one to see them first. I think he will be the one who presents them to the world. I think he will step away from his role and present those to the world. This is an assassin. The King of Swords is a, a fascinator. <laughs> um, the three of wands, they don't want him there because they don't want the uh, speculative information that he has. They don't want that in. Um, they will reveal the facts and the um, bastardization of the facts. We're going to see that. And then here he will be working with those teams to reveal who the real assassins were. So is RFK Jr.'s participation in the Donald Trump administration very interesting and very intriguing in terms of what we're going to find out about those fascinations? I think they are. So moving on. So Keir Starmer has been in the news quite a bit lately. <laughs> <laughs> People are talking about how much they don't like him. Rainbow Queen 1872 wrote to me two months ago on my video, The King and Care. OMG, but Starmer is proving to be a hardline WEF dictator communist at this time and basically slamming everyone who objects in jail. If Charles and Starmer are getting chummy, this country would be very upset and any loyalty to Starmer from KC would severely impact the future of the monarchy. The green agenda is being used as a front for a lot of other disturbing stuff. Follow the money. Contrary to this reading, interestingly, KC and Starmer are not known or known not to have got off on the right foot, as Keir immediately banned 
hereditary peerage. Did you know that Starmer hates the monarchy? So that was definitely seen as a shot across the bow by King Charles. In fact, this is the first online tarot reading I have seen, which hasn't predicted disaster for Starmer. He's a traitor who apparently won't see anything like his full term of office. It remains to be seen whether Casey's loyalty to Klaus and the WEF will win for his first duty, which is to his country and his people. The best tarot readers on YouTube concur that the army will step in to expose the corruption of Starmer and will save Britain and the army's allegiance to the crown is to the crown and not to the government, which su suggests that Casey will give the order. Thank God. So, wow, this is a loaded question. So um, when I did that reading, it was as uh, immediately as Starmer took the helm. So the energy at the time may have been very cooperative, even if King Charles was upset about the, um, the banning of the hereditary peerages. So let's see what the relationship is right now. We're going to see what Starmer, what Starmer thinks of the King and what the King thinks of Starmer today, right now, 1124 at 404. PM. So let's Eastern see what, what Eastern time, Eastern time, New York time. So this will be what Prime Minister Keir Starmer thinks of the King today, and what the King thinks of Keir Starmer today, right now. Oh, Keir Starmer, off with their heads. So this is not moving in as radical a direction as I would like them to. I think his presumption that King Charles would latch on to the green agenda, latch on to progress for progress's sake, I think it was mis placed on the part of Keir Starmer. Um, while he does not like the monarchy, I think he thought that he could get in there and manipulate through progress where the government takes more of a head over the royal family. So instead of being um, uh, elected at the pleasure of the king, he is really leaning into the election. Now, I, I do know that there was a third of the populace that did not go out and vote, which is very disappointing in England. But I think, unfortunately, this is a tide that does not turn in the direction of Keir Starmer. I think it is very, very difficult um, for him to get into a workable relationship with King Charles. Now, let's see what King Charles thinks of him. King Charles, <laughs> how many prime ministers has King Charles seen? Is it three or four? I, I don't know. Um, but he says, this guy won't last. He's not going to last. What do we have here? Um one of the things that King Charles is very worried about is revolution, is the uprising of the people of England, where he would have to step in and smooth that path as the Queen of Cups and just really calm the masses. So um, if Prince Philip was uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth's, oh, what did she say? You are my blank and my stay. Fill in the blank for me, guys. Um, I think that the, the royal family becomes that in England. So let's take a look with all this displeasure with Keir Starmer. Everyone is just kind of put off by him. Or a lot of people. I shouldn't say everyone. I'm sure someone likes him. Somebody's got to like him. His mama might like him. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> no simple jack. <laughs> so what is Keir Starmer's 
future in England. The hangman, he's going to have to learn from the processes that he put in place under the surface. King of Pentacles, or um, Ten of Pentacles, the Five of Cups, that Page of Swords. What's our outcome card here? Ace of Pentacles. Huh. Does he change course? I'm going to ask for some clarifier cards on this because it's a new beginning. Oh, my. I don't think that he is going to back down out of his position. I think he is much more tenacious than he appears. I think he is really going to become somewhat of a difficult personality in government. And what does that mean? I don't think he is going to be cooperative with King Charles or Prince William. I think he is going to um, really be going against the grain with, with a number of individuals. I think he's going to make things a little bit difficult in terms of getting him out of there. He's not really uh, reading the room. I think his perception is, I was voted in, I'm here to stay, I'm not going anywhere. Though the position itself is almost vacating him. Um, when he walks down the halls of 10 Downing Street, it's almost like people are shrinking into their offices, stepping away from him and giving him a lot of lip service and a lot of yes, 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 we can do that. But then going back into their offices and saying, well, you know, we only have a little bit of time that we have to deal with him. We're not, we're not going to be stuck with him. How much damage could he do in this amount of time? And since there's a revolving door, he probably won't stay stay for very long. There's that presumption. There's a certain malaise on the part of people in uh, the, the, uh, the government right now in England that they are all kind of waiting. There's a certain politeness in British rule that they're all kind of waiting for someone else to step to the fore and say, well, you know, we'll take it from here and we'll, we'll make this work. So um, there's a lot of that. There's not many people. I mean, we do have Tommy Robinson. Um, you know, we do have Nigel Farage, who are a bit more outspoken. But no one in the immediate government is willing to step forward and say, we're not going to do this. There's a lot of a lot of that outside from the opposition, uh, from Keir Starmer's opposition, but not a lot from the inside. So I do think that there is a hesitancy to ask him or suggest that he remove himself from the office. So uh, that gives his ego, uh, you know, full head. He can go fully forth and just kind of run things the way he sees. So, uh, you know, the wild thing is that he is creating these conduits. So what I see is like the, there's a power center and there's all these like rubber hoses, these tubes that go to all these other projects and we're just not pumping things into them. So while the conduits are there, um, the conduits would be his, you know, ideas about how things should run and how things should go. There's just not a lot of support for them. So not a lot of energy goes into them. So uh, it's, it's going to be interesting. Is he going to continue the immigration crisis in the United Kingdom? I know that the United Kingdom has a similar immigration crisis to what we have here. Is he going to continue with that immigration crisis? Yes. This is again, like a voting thing. Like we want to get more people here. We need more workers here. Um, you know, we have to take the good with the bad. It doesn't matter what you think. If you don't like it, you're, you're, you know, perfectly able to immigrate elsewhere. That's kind of the attitude. Um, uh, you know, the changing face of the United Kingdom, you have to roll with this is really his disposition on it. So I don't think that he is going to make changes in terms of the immigration. I don't think he's going to address that. Um, he is going to rather make more excuse for it. We need these people to do the jobs that you all won't do. So I think he is going to do that. So, um, so with Rainbow Queen, Does the army step in to expose the corruption? 
in the British government? Does the army step in? Do we get that? Which is a bit of a revolution, people. I'm just going to say that. One, two, three. So I do think that we see not a military exercise or a, a, a deploying of the army, the armed forces. I don't think we see that, but I think we see them say, come on, man, we got to we got to get going on this because you're getting into a very dangerous situation. I do think that we will see a bit of protesting, and I know that there's been clamping down on this, but I do think we're going to see a bit of protesting through the winter. Um, very similar to 1914 Russia. I think we're going to see people standing out in the cold demanding that their needs be met and their needs be met first. So I'm not sure who is doing the protesting. Um, I almost see like there are three different factions of protesters that are going to be um you know, vocal on a variety of uh, subjects for themselves, not a cohesive, uh, cohesive want, but I think we're going to see three different sets of people. Um, one is going to be an immigrate, uh, an immigrant community that will be protesting. Uh, there will be one that is looking for more traditional values. And then um, there's going to be one that I think is more of a libertarian kind of vibe, like knock the crap off and let's all just, you know, get on with uh, making sure that everyone is healthy and happy. That that third group, that more libertarian group, I think is going to be very outspoken about uh, the treatment of older folks in the United Kingdom. So I think we're going to see some some stuff over the winter in the in the United Kingdom. Um, a little bit of unrest. Hopefully they will maintain a decorum that is expected of the United Kingdom. So we're going to jump back to Harry and Meghan for just a minute. I'm going to do a one part, one part call, one part call, one card pull on this. Um, was Meghan invited to the book event that was associated with Oprah. Now you remember this was at a bookstore um, that Megan did a, a whole speech and she had a whole weird thing, bring me the book. Um, I, you know, Harry was supposed to go, Oprah showed up and Megan was like thrown off her game. So was Megan invited to that book event? Was she invited? The devil. No, she was not. Was she invited as Harry's plus one? Yes, she was. That was how she went. What happened there? So Harry opted not to go. And she immediately stepped in at the event and said, I will step in and function as him. What was their response? Oh, that's great. That's good. Well, let's get this done as quickly as possible. Um, wait, wait, wait. What, what, what? How are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? What's the story? So, she said, "Successful. This is an environment where I can promote myself. I'm going to be altruistic, but I'm not going to say anything. It's going to be a bunch of word salad." chariot. They wanted to move her off as quickly as possible because she is full of beans. She doesn't really know what she's saying. Did Oprah invade that moment and throw her off her game? Yes. Oprah is not happy with her, does not want to be around her. And that was a scary, scary moment. So that's why she was thrown off. Bring me the book. Bring me the book. Bring me the book. And she was licking her lips like a lizard, like a lizard person. So, all right, we're going to back off her now. Correction, we're not going to back off her. We got another question about her. And this, again, is from two months ago from the ever popular Stephen Magnus, who shows up in everybody's live feeds with awesome, awesome information. So Megan invested in Clever Blends. Megan invested in the SESTA Collective Foundation. Um, she also invested in Lemonada, which I guess is not promoting... <laughs> 
her show now. Um, and Lemonada was trying to find an investment bank to sell the company. This was two months ago. So Megan investing in these female owned brands, is it really a passion? Is she really trying to uplift these or is she just trying to align herself with women? So with women that have a modicum of success, which is it? Is she trying to uplift or align herself with successful women? Cause she doesn't do anything. Uplift. Uplift, uplift, or align herself for the betterment of herself. Uplift, the moon. No, there's a secret thing. She's phony, phony, phony. This is a phony kind of altruism here. This is a phony, false sweetness. Under the surface, she is moving away from them. She's not trying. The, the, the idea is that she's trying to really help out a fledgling brand. But the truth is, is that she doesn't have any juice to do that. So she's trying to make her image better. Yes. No one likes her on her own. So she has to align herself with others. Is it working? No, because she's picking medium level brands and she's decimating them with all of her chaos and throwing all of this stuff at spaghetti at the wall. So, um, no, she's, she's not doing this for, you know, altruistic feminine reasons. What she's doing is going in there and trashing people's hard work because she really has a negative, negative, um, image in the world. So, um, someone, Marnie Hall had asked, what is the possibility that Megan will pay alimony to her husband given the multiple streams of revenue in case of the divorce? It is possible in the uh, California. California is a community property state. So is Megan going to have to pay alimony to Harry? We'll do past, present, future. In the past, no, she had no money in the past. In the future, three of pentacles, possibly. They possibly have ventures together that will pay dividends into the future. Here, in the present, she is cutting the deal and she does not like what this deal is looking like. It is not putting any money in her pocket, but look to the future. I think they have collective endeavors that it'll kind of wash out. So it's not necessarily like they're paying um, alimony to each other, but they will still have these investments that are going to pay out to both of them. I just don't think that he's going to have any money that's going to be payable to her. Um, I think she is going to wind up going to the crown and asking for them to pay support. Um, what do they call it? Maintenance, maintenance, you guys call it. Um, so I think she'll she'll have to pay some maintenance um, on her own. I think she'll have to maintain herself to a certain extent, but I think the crown will maintain the children to a certain extent, but we're gonna see. That's the, the energy that's at hand right now. So I'm going to wrap this up with a little bit of Jason Momoa. This question came from one month ago. Will his relationship with Adria Ariona <coughs> last? It seems somewhat off from the photos of them together. And also why Jason Momoa seems to be more into his band and vodka. Is this to replace his slow movie career? <coughs> Quite frankly, I think Jason Momoa should have a YouTube channel of him just making mayonnaise sandwiches, and I would watch that. Not opposed to watching a mayonnaise sandwich from that man. <coughs> so what is the deal with his relationship with Adria Ariona? Oh, Ten of Swords. I don't know if they've broken up. 
<laughs> but it sure looks like it. Again, this question was from about a month ago. So I think that the relationship has run its course. I don't think that they have a lot in alignment in terms of need and perspective. I just really think that they're kind of on different trajectories. Um, for her, oh, I just got two cards. Ooh, I think there was some unusual uh, objectives here that he walked away from. We're, we're going to put those over here for now. So how do they see each other? Yeah, Knight of Swords, others, Four of Cups. You can do better. Six of Pentacles. I think he said, yeah, you're sweet, kid, but go on your way. Um, Hangman in reverse. I think that Jason needs to uh, get out of the pleasing oneself. You know, and and I, that's not to say that he's always been like that, but you know, post breakup, we do get into that sense of um, I'm just gonna go buck wild and do whatever I want. So I think he was having a little bit of that moment, and I think he got in a little too deep with somebody who liked him a whole lot. How could you not? Um, yeah, yeah, I know you could say bad things about him. I'm not saying anything bad about him. I think he's kind of terrific. So super hot. So he could do a haka all day long um, or make mayonnaise sandwiches while doing a haka. So <laughs> I don't know if he learned um, learned his lesson in this. I think there's some element of him trying to keep his options open and not get involved too, too heavily with someone, partly because he's still healing from the end of his marriage. Um, a relationship with uh, Lisa Bonet. Rrr, Lisa Bonet, ridiculously hot. Can't wait to see what those kids grow up to look like. They're going to be gorgeous. She like patchouli oil. What's that? She looks like she smells like patchouli oil. She does look like she smells like patchouli. She probably does. She's probably one of those all natural people. Um, but still, she's wicked hot. You don't think? Oh, she's very pretty. Very definitely uh, naturally beautiful. Yes, I mean Zoe Kravitz. Their her daughter with Lenny Kravitz is spectacularly yeah. beautiful. beautiful. Yes, yes, one of those women you can't look away from. But I mean, she didn't Kravitz, stand a chance. Lenny Kravitz is stunningly beautiful. Lenny Kravitz, he's on my hall pass list. He's not on mine. He's, <laughs> he's not on yours. He's not. <laughs> You know, Patrick Stewart. <laughs> Greg, Greg, PD, and I, um, our hall pass list. We one day I said, I think Patrick Stewart is on my hall pass list, and uh, he goes, I think he's on mine too. <laughs> Why wouldn't he be? <laughs> it's Jean-Luc Picard. It's Jean-Luc Picard. He's also what? Didn't he? Did he? He didn't play Bob Cratchit. He played um, Ebenezer Scrooge, yeah, he, right? And yeah. So I would just have him read like Wikipedia to me. Honestly, you could read birthday card already. Yes. Happy birthday to you. Though you are one year I, older. I want him to be there every time I need salt and pepper. <laughs> so all right. Why is Jason Momoa more into his band and his brand of vodka? Is it to replace his slow movie career? So why is he more into his band? Let's start there. So when he's in the band, he is youthful and young and exuberant. And there's a, a certain level of like that rock and roll lifestyle. You're unfettered, you're ungrounded, unanchored to anything. You can kind of go out there and just let your freak flag fly. And he doesn't have to think about the lack of practicality at home. So I think that that's fair enough. The kids aren't there. Um, they're with their mom part of the time. So why is he so heavily into the vodka company? Why wouldn't you be? What is his vodka company? Uh, oh. Eyebrow scar. 
Eyebrow scar. So this is, you know, really this is something that he wanted to be like a legacy item for the kids, like a, like a, a sustainable source of revenue. I think he got into it at the wrong time. I think the, the intention was right, but the effort was just ill-timed. I, I think really he should have done it, uh, you know, when, when the, the iron was a little bit hotter, maybe during the um, Game of Thrones season one, question mark. Um, did he die in season one? He did. he did. That's what I thought. I didn't think he made it to season two. So I think maybe the, the effort should have been better placed in, um, in, in terms of timing. I think the, you know, it's kind of saturated. We, we've got a Kardashian with a, a tequila brand. We've got, you know, other people that are incarcerated currently in MDC. Um, Diddy, talking about Diddy, that have other uh, vodka brands. I, I just think the timing was off. Um, and I think part of the effort is trying to decide whether that brand is going to continue. So um, I think that's enough for this mixtape Monday it was a little bit of a throwback. I had found a bunch of questions from an earlier time from a time in the past. And I wanted to make sure that we did address those. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I've had a busy day of recording. I can now take my hair down and shake it out. I had it clipped up. Uh, so I'm going to shake my hair out and get a little bit crazier. So Thank you so much for joining me for this Mixtape Monday. Please remember, if you become a member of this channel, you can possibly get a free reading every month. I am going to give out one one hour to the Tarot Masters and one half hour to the Tarot Enthusiasts. My course should be done soon. And um, there's still the Le Normand and the free tarot course on there. You can link to those through the description of this video. Any of the cards that I use in this video, you can obtain through my Amazon affiliate link as well. I hope you have an amazing week ahead. It is Thanksgiving here in the United States, so everyone's going to be shuffling all over the place. I'll try and get as much content as done as possible. Um, earlier in the week, I cook for this, so this is my Super Bowl Sunday of cooking. I love it. I think it's amazing. It's my favorite meal to cook. So I hope everybody has a great week planned, and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye for now.